Gluten Talk. I'm Hendrik and I do all sorts of crazy sourdough experiments. In this eye-opening experiment, I will show you how baking your dough twice might result in a more sour sourdough bread. Background story. What I wanted to do is I wanted to open up a sourdough delivery bakery. I would just half bake the bread and then send it to the customers. I sent around 25 loaves in total. Mostly the feedback has been great, but some people reported the bread was so sour that all the water in their mouth was soaked up. They simply couldn't eat it. But I also know that some people of you just appreciate a very, very sour bread. So I have an idea, I have a theory. Let's head to my whiteboard and science this. So where does the sourness of your sourdough bread come from? You have three categories of microorganisms inside of your sourdough bread. You have yeast, lactic acid bacteria and acetic acid bacteria. The yeast mostly creates ethanol and CO2. Ethanol makes you a bit tipsy and CO2 makes the bread increase in size and fluffy. Lactic acid bacteria mostly create lactic acid, which has dairy notes. Acetic acid bacteria mostly creates acetic acid, which has vinegary notes. They also sometimes do produce a bit of ethanol and CO2 though. Interestingly, the bacteria also consumes the ethanol and creates even more acid out of it. In one of my past experiments, I deprived my stutter of oxygen. If you want to create acetic acid, you need oxygen. So by submerging my stutter in a lot of water, I changed my stutter to produce mostly dairy notes, lactic acid. Super interesting and mind-blowing if you ask me. That's where the idea of my liquid stutter came from and it actually works. So now why could my bread be more sour? Let's science this. So those are the main different ingredients that you have inside of your dough at the end. You have ethanol, water, acetic acid and lactic acid. Now ethanol starts to evaporate at around 70-80 degrees Celsius. Water at 100, magic right, 100 degrees, that's when water boils. Acetic acid at around 118 and then lactic acid at 122. The best way to know that your bread dough is actually done and properly cooked is to measure the internal temperature. So the magic temperature is around 92 degrees Celsius, that's when your bread dough is done. Afterwards, you only want to build your crust. That's the idea for my par bakery. Now, of course, once we are at 92 degrees Celsius, we are not close yet to 118 or 122. So this means not a lot of acid has evaporated during the bake. And this is my theory why a double baked bread might be more sour. The green part being the water, the red part being the acidity. Now at the start of the baking process, you only have a little bit of acid inside. You have a lot of water. So of course the acid is not as concentrated. Now during the baking process, the moment the water starts to evaporate, which is the concept also why Dutch ovens work, because water evaporates from the dough and stays inside of the Dutch oven, the more acidity you still have left because it takes the acidity longer to boil. And then at the end of the baking process, you pretty much only have a very tiny bit of water left and a lot of acidity. So it's going to feel more sour. And now by baking twice, I'm never entering the zone where the acid is actually boiling because I'm stopping the initial bake process at around 92 degrees Celsius. Of course, that's the core temperature. So more water from the outside of the dough is going to evaporate. But I will never enter that zone where ultimately also some of the acidity starts to evaporate, which is roughly above 118 degrees Celsius. So I think this really nicely visualizes it. This is the regular dough. The green spots being water and the red spots being the acidity. Now after the bake, you still have a bit of water left because not everything boiled. Plus you also have a bit of acidity left because not everything boiled. And now my dough, the double baked dough, because we sort of never get into that zone where we boil a lot of acidity during the bake because the dough is baked twice. There's just a bit of water left, but more acidity in the end. Normally everything is always baked in one go, but with my dough, with the double baked one, it doesn't. Okay. Sorry for all this theory. Now let's actually test this because this might be a game changer if you're a chaser of that sour taste. So the default typical baking process looks like this. You bake around 30 minutes at 230 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you check the core temperature of your bread. Once it's at around 92 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you are done. What you do next is you remove the steam and bake another 10 to 25 minutes. The second stage is just for darkening the crust. Now my idea for the par bakery has been to bake twice. I bake the same 30 minutes at 230 degrees Celsius, I check the core temperature and then the bread dough is actually already done. The second stage will be done by the customer. So I would take the dough, deliver it to the customer and then the customer would heat it up again in the oven for another 10 to 45 minutes to get the nice color. So to test this experiment, I will be using my pH meter. And this pH meter features a nice spearhead. 
making measuring of the pH very simple. Now, if you're a total bread nerd, a meter like this might be worth a purchase. It allows you to nail the fermentation. As you can see, how much acid is being piled up, especially when you have issues with over fermentation. A tool like this is going to allow you to always make the perfect bread. Now, the dough is a very highly hydrated dough. It has around 105% hydration, so it actually has more water than flour. I won't be able to score it, but I can just bake it like always. Let's start by testing the pH of this dough. So, what's also nice about this meter is that it has an automated temperature adjustment. The pH of this dough is now at around 4.1. Please note though that you can blindly trust this value when using a pH meter. You have to experiment and figure out this pH value for your own flour and dough. I made a full video on the topic, which I'll be linking right here. Okay, let's divide this dough into two pieces and then begin. This is also something that I like to do. I see the problem. <laughs> so yeah, this is a problem with the high hydration. I already thought about this. Should I really put this into a banneton? The banneton is completely soaking wet. This is something I also like to do. I like to just divide my sourdough, my proofed sourdough into different pieces and make buns out of it. Well, let's see if we can divide this now into two pieces. So that was a little bit cumbersome and definitely not my best idea I had, but since we just want to measure the acidity anyways, this is okay. So let's bake those beauties. This is now how I'm baking everything. And this is always the way how I bake on a stone like this. Then this inverted tray is definitely a game changer. It makes sure that all the steam here stays right below. That's exactly what we want. Plus some water. I'm baking for around 20 minutes with upper bottom heat at 230 degrees Celsius. While everything is baking now, I always like to watch what's happening. Maybe I'm a weirdo. And this is actually the idea of par baking. At around 92 degrees Celsius, your bread dough is already done. It's finished baking. So everything afterwards is mostly that you want a nice crust to develop. And for that, you also have to remove the source of steam. And the longer we're baking, the more acid also evaporates. And this is exactly the thing I noticed with my par baked loaves. So I'll be removing one of them and the other one will continue to stay in the oven. Making this dough was super fascinating. 105% hydration. This is so much full of water. All that water will also now start to evaporate. It pushes the dough upwards. This is gonna create a super fluffy crumb. Just one of my crazy experiments that I like to conduct from time to time. So I'm gonna let this finish bake and then show you the two final results next to each other. Here, bread number one. The one which I baked using my normal method. And please also pay attention to some of the blisters here. And now the one which I baked twice. Interesting, right? Also not as many blisters. Now let's check the pH of both of them. Crumb shots. First bread, interesting is this very large pocket of air right there. Also those pockets here towards the crust. I didn't really pay attention that much to the heat of the oven. To me, it doesn't look like over fermentation as well because there are pockets everywhere and those large pockets here could be a sign of way too much heat. And this is even more confirmed on the twice baked one. This is definitely a sign of me overheating the oven. Also, I was a little bit fast with slicing this open. But now let's check the pH. The fully baked one, pH of around 3.85. And the pH of the twice baked. And look at this, a pH of 3.7. So this is definitely lower, which means the twice baked dough is more sour. And it might look like a small difference, but this is actually quite a lot more sour. But now let's test this. Do I actually notice the difference while tasting? 
I'm so amazed by this. Okay, please don't ask why I'm sitting again next to my oven. But let's try the fully baked one first. It's so gummy, this high hydration, but I kind of love it. And you have this slight sour note at the end. To me personally, this is not sour enough. It should be a bit more sour. And now the one which I double baked. Oh boy, yes. This one is actually way more sour when tasting it. This is the flavor that I personally like. But also, I think I could have probably fermented the bread just a bit more. Still, I think this is really, really, really interesting. So double baking has made my bread more sour. I'm super curious to hear your thoughts on this experiment. Please drop them in the comment section of this video. This experiment has a couple of really amazing implications. Now, if you bake your bread for too long, at some point the acidity is going to evaporate as well. If you want to improve the shelf life of your sourdough bread, then baking twice seems like a great idea. The increased acidity is going to block all other external pathogens from entering your bread. Hope you had fun and hope you learned something new. As always, may the gluten be with you. Also, thank you to all the monthly supporters. This really means a lot. You are making this channel possible. So thank you. May the gluten be strong with the supporters and of course everybody else.